As I mentioned before, that puts some level on points now with Liverpool getting the victory there. You said lucky, Stevie. I, I, I didn't see them scoring in this game until the red card. I, I really didn't. I thought Brentford pretty much dealt with everything they had to throw at them. And, and I, I just didn't see Villa... Listen, I, I thought because there would obviously be some sort of charge towards the end because they're in a position because they're, they're strong. But I had no way at 1-0 that I think they could win it. Could they snatch a point when you're only one behind, maybe? But no, the, the sending off totally, in my opinion, changed this game. What a weekend then when it comes to the Premier League title race, which is certainly well and truly on. According to the bookies, City are still favourites at 6-5. to five. But remember, they've been long odds on at the start of the campaign. And then it's Liverpool are second favourites ahead of Arsenal. I'm oh, sorry, no, Arsenal fa second favourites and Liverpool and Villa at 14 to 1. Oof. Has anything changed? Has this weekend changed anything for you as to who's going to win it? Do you know, City continue to just. If I was a City fan, I actually, if I was the manager, I'd be concerned. We sit here and we have done and said they can't keep a clean sheet. Mm. Now, this game was. So bad for so long. It was a training game. But as soon as City get a punch in the nose at the moment, they look vulnerable. Yeah. And Crystal Palace never, ever looked like they were going to get back in this game. It was so one way. But as soon as they get the Mateta goal, then it's panic stations. And unfortunately for them, several or two or three of the really good defenders that have been solid for certainly 18 months or so, I'm not playing particularly well. And so, everybody's talking about Kevin De Bruyne coming back. That's fine. But they're going to have to plug the gap at the other end. That's their biggest problem. So, back to my question. Has it changed anything? Yeah, I think so. I think it continues to change. Uh, Arsenal are... I think Arsenal are starting to play better because Arsenal are in this position and they've only... For a long period this season, they have not played the type of football we know they can, right? So they're starting to hit a little bit of momentum now and players are back fit, most of them, back playing with confidence. Villa are sort of a fly in the ointment. Yep. Uh, Liverpool, we know, uh, are going to be there or thereabouts. And so I think that's a big problem for Man City. They're going to have to put one of these runs together that you sit back and go, wow, that's yeah. amazing. And they don't look likely at this moment in time. You know, the, the most important thing for them, and I think Guardiola, of all people, should figure this one out. When they get that punch in the nose, this is a team that, at the best, you can't get the ball off them. Right. And so, when they get a punch in the nose, what the best teams do when they're, when they're at their best is they take the air out of the game by passing the ball and keeping it away from the opposition. But even in this game, when that, that first goal went in, all of a sudden, they're not quite as confident. And that is huge. So if you stick a little bit of... a little, They're kind of questioning themselves. Mm. And you also stick on top of that the fact that defensively they're not at it. That, that's a problem. And, and he has to figure that out. And that's how to do it. You keep the ball, don't give it to the opposition. Uh, well, well, it's a big test for him because last year he had one team to worry about. Yes. And, and currently now he's got at least three. Mm -hmm. At least three. Uh, that are in there that are competitive so he's got to worry about all last year it was only are Arsenal going to falter and, and when they did City were there he's got a lot of work to do because these other guys all fancy their chances and at the moment City are the poorer of all the four teams uh, City of course not involved in the Carabao Cup midweek it was Newcastle who knocked them out some mouth worrying ties you live here on ESPN Plus including Newcastle against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, Port Vale against Middlesbrough, Everton Fulham, and then on Wednesday, it's Liverpool against West Ham. He looked a little shell-shocked after the last few weeks. So Arsenal 2, Brighton 0, exactly what you want. No problems, no fuss, three points, thank you very much. Well, there was a little bit of fuss for, for, quite, for, for quite a period, <laughs> but, but what I would say is, uh, I haven't seen anybody, uh, I haven't seen any team in the Premier League that have not allowed Brighton... And we saw the stats there at the end, 50-50 yeah, possession, that but that doesn't... Still. Certainly, not, and certainly no. not for the first hour. I've not seen any Premier League team that have denied Brighton possession or territory as well as Arsenal. They couldn't get out, mm. Brighton. Now, they're one of the best teams at playing out 
under, under De Zerbe. They normally boss possession, they normally create chances. Arsenal, I saw them do it against, I think, Wolves at home, who are obviously not as good as Brighton. They just smothered them in their own half. They play such a high line, they shut it down. James Milner played left back, which was a, <laughs> felt a bit sorry for him because they were yeah. Saka and one and one. But Arsenal, you know, you've got to say deserve it. You've got to earn it. And they got the Gabriel Jesus goal comes from the flick from, from Van Heck, from the Brighton player. But they were the better side and they played well, created chances, were wasteful in the final third, mm. or this could have been, they could have had herself at least four, maybe five. So, yeah, a good bounce back after their defeat at Aston Villa. And rock solid at the back again. David Raya didn't have much to do, certainly to my uh, memory. And uh, Gabriel, Gabriel just gets himself a goal. So a, pretty much a perfect weekend for them. Anything you want to add? Yeah, anybody who never saw this game and looks at those stats, don't be fooled. I mean, that 50% 50 possession Brighton had, maybe 5% of that was in the opposition's half. It was all in and around their own penalty box. So, yeah. And I know every week goes by, but what, I mean, we have, you know, we we've talked about Havertz a lot on the mm -hmm. show. Obviously, we've talked about Raya a lot. You know, it's a lot of money, but Arsenal are not in this position. And are, if Arsenal win the Premier League, Declan Rice, the signing of Declan Rice, has been the smartest bit of spending money I think they've done for a long time because he does everything in there. Do you think he starts against Liverpool? Who? Kai Havertz. <laughs> what? Did you? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, I, was, I actually wasn't listening entirely. Clearly. I was, about, I was thinking about that. Is that what you said? Declan Rice. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I was talking about Declan Rice. I beg your pardon. Uh, does, I thought you were going to say that. I was thinking about Harvard. Like, well, yeah. I was talking about Declan Rice, and you said, do you think he starts against Liverpool? Uh -huh. Do I think Harvard starts? Yeah, yeah. The uh, result that Arsenal fans will be delighted with after, of course, they beat Brighton earlier today. It means they remain top of the table, one clear of Liverpool. Aston Villa coming from behind to get the victory, which puts them on 38 points as well. But let's... We, all had a, we all had a draw, didn't we? Well, Frank well, Lebeuf we, did. Uh, no, no, he, who's he? He's that was been, a tough game. He's been, <laughs> th this was rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was... It was frustrating, as, as what well, it was. Well, certainly from a Liverpool perspective. Oh, just my as goodness. A, yeah. Talk about frustrating. You've got to give credit to United. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to defend. And we're always complaining how nobody defends anymore. Well, they did everything that, that, that was needed. They got, they got their head in the way. They got challenges in. They closed the ball. And I think the most important thing, though, was every single one in white, all 11 of them, worked for each other right. and did their bit defensively. And I, and I kind of go back to when, when last week Bruno got his got his yellow and was suspended. Mm -hmm. I was teetering, and I remember saying to Craig, is that good or bad for Liverpool? And of course, I guess at the time we thought, well, it's bad for Man United. But in the end, when I think about the, the performance from Manchester United today, it was probably the best thing that happened to them. Because every man, Jack, one of them, did the job defensively. And I, I don't believe you can say that Bruno Fernandes would have defended better than either McTominay, McNew, uh, or Amrabat, because one of them wouldn't have played if he had been available. Did you say McNew? McGoo. Uh, <laughs> McGoo. I know. It's I know. But didn't he... But oh, did... Listen to Dalot. Hmm? <laughs> listen to Dalot. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I just, I just, if we're picking up on names, I just... Well, just you just put a muck in, mate. He turned him <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> You've got to give that young boy a lot of credit, though. No, he's definitely. He looks good, didn't he? He's played well coming in, and he's, he's got very little experience. I thought this was a big credit to Man United. They come, in, they come into Anfield in disarray, with injuries, players missing, out of form, bickering, all the things that you don't want. And Stevie's right. You know, the fact that they had a main playmaker out gave them a bit more solidity. And McTominay did a, a job getting between the middle of the park and, and supporting Hoyland up front. And I thought the back four uh, defended their penalty box really, really well. But Liverpool were poor. The first 15 minutes, you, 10 minutes, you're like, right, this is it. This is, they're, they're on top here. There's corner kick, there's a wave after wave. And you thought, but then United were able to sort of weather that. And then it sort of went a little flat. And if you think back to the game at Palace, Stevie, 
recently. Uh, was it, I think it was last week. Yep. It took till Jordan Ayew was sent off. For them to actually create anything. 70 minutes, right. and, and they went on to win the game, but it was, it was certainly not convincing. And when you look at that performance today, with all the possession that they had, yeah, United defended deep, but they really ran out of ideas. I yeah. mean, Nunes, Nunes is going... There's a lot to like about him, but he's got the Alvaro Maratas about him. He's, he's, he's understanding of when to be on the shoulder and playing the offside. He gets caught offside a lot, mm. an awful lot. And add that to his lack of prowess as a finisher and consistency, that's a bit of a problem. But I just felt this was Liverpool's game to go and take with the scruff of the neck. But Man United, I thought, bearing in mind where they are at the moment, I thought they did a brilliant job. Just And, and as you said, had the best chance of the game. Unfortunately, Hoyland's not got a Premier League goal. Yeah. And it shows. He's... he's, he's He's nervous, he's, he's like rushing it in the, the, when he gets in that key area. And if he doesn't change that, he, he won't score goals on a regular basis. But boy, oh boy, this is a big result for them, for Man United, because everybody thought they were going to get trounced by four or five. What was wrong in the final third today, Stevie? Just very predictable. Nothing out of the ordinary, no imagination. I mean, to, to, to Craig's point, who knows? I mean, Man United, I think, were about... 15 yards from the goal line and he managed to get himself offside then as well and I kind of when I saw that I thought oh it's going to be one of these certainly for him but just in general there was no imagination in the play listen from from back middle to get into the, the final third yeah I mean they were completely and totally in, in control but after that predictable you know we talk about Anthony coming on his left Salah was doing that all day as well Luis Diaz was trying to drop the shoulder and come inside on your mate Dalot and kept losing the ball. And as Craig said, Nunes, you know, he does prefer it when there is some space in behind, which there wasn't because Man United was so deep. So, look, at the end of the day, when you've had so much of the ball and you get to the final throw, as many times and as regularly in the 90 minutes as Liverpool did, there's a reason you pay Salah, Nunes and Diaz the big money. And that's to produce. Mm. And it's okay to say, well, they were deep and they, they had men behind the ball, but you don't, get, you don't get paid an expectation of winning the Premier League or the Champions League. That sort of excuse doesn't, doesn't really get you a pass. You didn't produce when it mattered most, and you have to say that and be honest about it. When you're looking at a couple of games when we could maybe argue or debate that Sabozla has been their best player this year, Right, and he's had a two or three really quiet games. Mm -hmm. He was poor, he, not poor, he was quiet at Crystal Palace. And even today, his passing and was just a little bit off and the timing of his pass and his runs. And, and I think when that's happening, uh, that mid, uh, put it one way, I don't, I don't look at that Liverpool midfield three, certainly not this three, and I know it's not the best three. I don't think this is going to carry them to the title. I mean, I know they've got players to come back in, but that, that three in particular as a, as, as a three ball in there, I, I don't think that's going to work for them. You, when I've asked you in the past who is more likely to catch City, you said Liverpool over Arsenal. Does this sort of performance change that? Well, yeah, because they're going to be coming up against, on a regular basis, defences that, that will try and do what United do. And, and you have to be able to break them down. And they've shown in this game that they couldn't do it. But again, I'll go back to my main point, where I think Liverpool's biggest problem will be is defensively they give up opportunities. You know, to have... I mean, I think the stats said Liverpool had 70% of the ball. It felt like 80 or 90. But the fact is, if Hoyland has got some composure mm. and figures it out, Man United take three points from this game. And that's, again, that's just the honest truth. So, so the fact that they couldn't break them down, the fact that they are still giving opportunities away means that, for me, probably Arsenal edge Liverpool and City. i tell you what, though. Give him a lot of stick and a few of those players. And I think deservedly the United players, that is. He annoys the hell out of me, Anthony, and one or two others with their attitude and their, their sort of the way they swan around. He's missed a nice these but days. But i tell you what, <laughs> fair play to him, though. He's, he could not... Any of those guys, Garnaccio, who's a youngster, he's going to work hard. All these guys, are, even Anthony, working back... All right, final third going forward in the second half. I think he picked the wrong ball a couple of times, like Stevie said. Right. Otherwise, Liverpool could have been in more trouble. But he, 
he worked hard for the team. He got back. He made tackles. He had good shape about him. All those things we were not saying. Some of these guys were swanning around. And if we're, if we're thinking about the stories that floated around and we're floating around about, about Ten Hag's lost the dressing room, he certainly hadn't lost that 11 today. Mm. But he had two centre-halves who are, I think John Champion in commentary said, I think 199 caps between them. He had two centre-halves that know how to defend. Yeah. Not going to run away from anybody. And if you're going to try and play a high line, then Johnny Evans is screwed. But they weren't never going to play that game at Anfield. They were going to sit on the edge of the box. And Varane, who has been out the team for whatever reason, I can't answer that question, him and Evans defended crosses and defended and blocked extremely well. But getting Luke Shaw back in recent weeks as well has been huge for him. The key for Ten Hag is to keep this lot at the standard of attitude that they showed against Liverpool. And if they do that, then they've got enough ability where they will win more games and may get themselves up the table. But the problem is, if you play for one of the big guys, it's not about having a good attitude away at Liverpool or home at Liverpool or at Man City. Those, those are games that should be a given. Because mm. if, you, if you're not up it's for a game like Bournemouth. that... It's home against It's home or away against Bournemouth or Brighton or Crystal Palace or whoever it is. That's when you have to show that type of attitude. Because if you do that, because you have the extra talent, that will get you points. That's what he's got to do now. Take this into the next lot of games. But I, I also, Stevie, I just don't think it's... I, well, attitude's a big thing, right? Mm. But I also think one of the problems this current crop of United players has is when they do open up against even mediocre teams, they're getting caught. Yeah. They're getting played around. Now, today, it was slightly easier because nobody was expecting them to go to Anfield and go to toe-for-toe. To -to. So that pressure was gone. They knew that they could go there, play a defensive game, and were not going to be criticised for doing so. They can't do that against the majority in the Premier League. And when they have opened themselves up uh, and, and tried to boss games, they've been caught out. So we'll see how he goes forward with that. But it's, it's a big day for Ten Hag because 7-0 last time out, 4-0 yep. the time before. This could have been messy for him. He, he, if he said he wasn't worried about it all weekend, <laughs> he was lying.